Hey, it's Jen. Have you ever listened to one of the episodes and thought to yourself, oh, I wish I could leave a response to that, or I wish I could leave feedback or ask a question. Did you know there's actually a way to do that in Spotify now? I know it's super cool. So if you head over to Spotify and search for Java with Jen podcast or Java with Jen hearing God's voice for everyday life, you may have to search all of it. And then you go and check out my most recent episodes. There are polls and Q&A options that you can weigh in on and I can connect with you that way over here on this platform. I usually use Instagram to connect with you guys, but now with this feature from Spotify, it's a super cool way to engage with the content of each episode and talk to me directly. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So go head over to my latest episodes on Spotify and let's do that right now. If you've ever struggled with how to have a quiet time, what that could look like, what the heck is a quiet time, or even what's the goal of it, today's episode has your name written all over it. In fact, it's such a great episode, why don't you share it with a friend so y'all can discuss it after you've both listened. Also, don't forget to stay tuned all the way to the end for Life Hacks with Jen, where I share an easy, quick recipe for a guilt-free dessert that you're going to love, and a tip for getting free, awesome music to enhance your quiet times. This episode is super loaded, so let's dive right in. Hi, and you're listening to Java with Jen with your host, Jenilee Samuel. Hey guys, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be back with you again. Java with Jen has been on a uh, I've been calling it a seasonal break because it's a great time to start season two, but It has been really and practically because my husband and I went on a ministry sabbatical. We were so, so, so privileged uh, that our pastors blessed us with a sabbatical so that we could just spend some time investing into our family after 14 years of solid full-time ministry, and it was so refreshing, so necessary, but I am so excited to get back to y'all and get back in your ear pods. So today's episode, as you know now, we are talking about how to have a quiet time. This is a topic that is so close to my heart because I remember when I was in college learning and struggling with a strong emphasis on the word struggling to learn how to have a quiet time that felt like it was effective or was actually benefiting me. Like I felt like I was floundering all over the place. So I thought I'd stop off, start off with just telling you some of my little experiences there and just kind of the journey I've walked through that has really helped make having a quiet time uh, simpler and more enjoyable and just plain more effective, something that feels like it's actually building my connection with the Lord. So uh, let me start you off with a story though, because I feel like we can all connect to this. So when I was in college and I went to Bible school, it was two years where I really was investing into my relationship with the Lord. And, uh, and I remember I would have some quiet times where I literally was thinking, okay, what's the trick to having a quiet time where I feel like I connect with the Lord? And so I was like, okay, I just got to read the word a whole lot. So I'd read the word, read the word. And there would be like these days where it was just so dry. And so I remember one day um, I really connected with the Lord reading Psalms. And so I was like, "Ah, that must be it. It must be Psalms. And so the next day I pull out Psalms and I try to do literally the exact same thing I had done the day before. And of course it, it, it was totally dry it, because I was just trying to follow a formula. And so it was just really frustrating. And I remember just begging the Lord some days, like screaming, like, why won't you talk to me? And like, I was a mess. I was a hot flipping mess, y'all. So I realized when I kind of stepped away from looking at it like this pass or fail, spiritual or unspiritual success or failure type of a situation. And I just panned back and I just looked at it like a regular relationship with my best friend. I don't go to my best friend and try to go through this formula of how to connect. I show up. I'm excited to see her. I hug her. I ask her what's been going on and we just start talking and connecting. And so, or if you think about connecting with a boyfriend, you know, like You don't follow this formula of like, we go to a movie, we go to dinner, we talk about ABC, and then it was a good date. Like formulas don't work for relationships. And so I threw away the idea 
of having a formula. And the idea of a formula probably came from very well-intentioned sources of trying to give us tools to build our, a quiet time experience, but I put so much of an emphasis on tools and formula that I totally lost the natural ebb and flow dynamic of the fact that this God is a real being <laughs> and this is a real growing relationship. And all relationships have ebbs and flows. They have really connected times and they have maybe less connected times and they have, you know, times where you feel confused about the relationship or times when you just feel thrilled and you know right where you are in regard to the other person. And so I stepped back and started looking at it with less pressure and just uh, a simpler perspective of God is a person, not a human, but a, a person, a being with wishes and with desires and with a will and with um, a personality. And so I started stepping back and just looking at God as a being, a, a person that I could have a friendship with. And so I found that when I would begin to approach the Lord in a way that was courteous and kind of threw away my agenda and started coming to him like, okay, Lord, what's on your heart? What are you in the mood for today, Holy Spirit? And how can I bless your heart? How can I show up for you today? Because if you think about it, any relationship that's one-sided, where it's all about one person and their needs and not the other, that's really an unhealthy relationship. And so I was like, you know, Lord, I have always been approaching this like it's all about how I can connect with you or what I can get from you or how you can relieve my confusion or what you can speak to me because I want to hear from you. And while those are good and motivated by desire to know him, they were still in many ways really self-motivated. And so I was like, you know, Lord, I'm so sorry. Like I haven't been very considerate of you. I haven't been worried about what you worry about. And well, not that God worries, but you know what I mean? Like His concerns needed to become my concerns because they matter. And so I stepped back and started trying to um, just ask the Lord, what are you in the mood for today? Instead of me trying to figure this thing out, what are you in the mood for? And I found that when I started approaching him in that way, it honored him and I could feel the Holy Spirit show up so quickly because suddenly... I was I was honoring his presence. I was being mindful of him. And isn't it funny when we have a relationship with someone? If you've ever had a friendship with somebody who they walk up and they just start telling you about their life and they start telling you about everything that's going on, you have a whole conversation about them and and their struggles or their joys or their victories whatever, and the conversation ends and you never really got to share about your own self. It feels like a shallow relationship. And I didn't want to do that to the Lord. I was like, man, I already need you so much. You're already going to have to give more in this relationship than I do. And so I really want to take the time to honor your presence and honor what you care about. And as I did that, the Lord's presence would just show up every time because I was honoring him. So I kind of jumped right into the shortcut. (laughs) Um, But it's really honestly that simple. Um, But let's, let's tackle real quick why do we have a quiet time? And I guess you've kind of already seen some of that, which is it's to it's to build your relationship with the Lord. We talked in the last two episodes about hearing the Lord's voice and always keeping in perspective the why behind these things helps us stay away from religious thinking. That's like, well, we just do it because it's always been done. Um, and it keeps in perspective the purpose and the vision. The reason I have a quiet time with the Lord is because I really need Jesus. Like, I'm a hot mess without Jesus. I start to get really selfish. I start to get really um, uh, fleshy. And when I say fleshy, I mean like irritable, cranky, demanding, self-centered, like all the ugly things we don't like in ourselves. And John 15 talks about, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you will bear fruit. And said that about how God is the vine and we are the branches. And apart from him, we cannot bear fruit. The fact is, in our lives, if we get disconnected from the Father's heart, we start to produce bad fruit. 
we start, we begin the, the stopping of producing good fruit in our lives. And I think all of us appreciate feeling balanced and grounded. I don't know when I'm, when I'm bearing good fruit in my life, I'm being, uh, walking in love. I'm demonstrating patience with people. I'm able to keep my words in check and think before I speak, you know, things like that. Good fruit, um, doing things kind for other people, whatever. It makes me feel good and right. Like the world is right. Like I'm in the right place doing the right things. I feel settled in my heart and grounded about life. And I think that's because God designed us from the very beginning to have a close, intimate relationship with him. In the garden, Adam and Eve, he put them there with the sole purpose of having a relationship with them because God wanted to walk with us. God wanted to know us. And there wasn't trouble yet. <laughs> like he gave them something to do, tend to the garden, so he would have something to put his hands to. Um, but the whole point of the garden was to know the Father. And so at the core of our existence, our our fundamental purpose is to know him. And when we're knowing him and we're walking in unity with him and in agreement with him and our hearts are submitted to his heart, everything feels right and at peace. Even if the world is falling around you and and crazy things are going around you, if your relationship with the Lord is in is in place and is secure, and when I say secure, I mean you're connecting with the Father, um, the world feels right. Your life feels stable. And, and I believe it's also because when we're connecting with the Father, our thinking is good. Our thinking is based on truth. In John 15, the passage I just read, it says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will bear much fruit. When we abide in him, and I've been thinking on that even, even recently, like abiding in him means like I'm literally walking with him. Um, abiding means to like hide in something and to walk with something. And if I'm hiding in the Father, walking with the Father, His words are in me, meaning that when I speak, I'm not speaking from fear, I'm not speaking from confusion, I'm speaking from truth, Um, then you bear good fruit. And that's because when God made the world (laughs) and people and how things would work, He did it all from the place of truth. So when we're in truth and we're connected to the Father, we are in... We are fully walking in the divine reason why he created us in the first place. I hope I'm not losing anybody. I hope I'm not being too abstract in my words. Okay, so getting his word in your heart helps stabilize your soul. Fear that comes up, confusion, frustration. We have time with Jesus. I have time with Jesus because every day... When we go through hurts, disappointments, the challenges of life, stressful thinking, we can begin to develop toxic thinking, negative thinking. The enemy easily slips lies into our minds that if we don't catch them, if we don't correct them, can begin to build an unhealthy foundation in our hearts. And so I have time with the Lord because it gives me the opportunity to connect with him. And like the word also says in Romans 12 too, to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. When I sit down with the Lord and I'm journaling and I'm just writing out my thoughts and I'm sharing with the Lord my feelings and I put them before him, it's easy for me to see where I'm getting off track and for him to step in and correct my thinking with the word or by him just speaking directly to me. And what that does is it it shifts my mind and it literally transforms who I am because then I can step away from toxic thinking and step back into truth-filled, love-filled, peace-filled thinking, and it changes the direction of my life. And so getting into his word every day, whatever that looks like, um, is a way that I keep grounded and I keep myself as a healthier individual. Um, we've all been around people that maybe they have so much baggage, like they have so many emotional issues to work through. They just feel like a complicated, unstable person. And then we've been around people who feel so rested and settled with life and, and feel like they're actually in charge of their own soul. Um, and they feel stable and, and they produce peace in us when we're around them. Okay, 
The difference between those people is how we rule and manage our souls and how we rule and manage our thinking and rule and manage the things we're believing. And time with Jesus helps us to do that. It helps us to rule and manage our own souls that if we don't, if we just let our heart run its course, it will take us to places we never intended to go because lies will set up in our thinking that we don't identify. And and then we begin to obey and follow them and act according to them. And then we end up kind of on this path that's very destructive. And so that's, that's a major reason why I have time with the Lord. The Bible talks about give us our bread, give us this day our daily bread. And The word, the Lord is very clear, like daily we need him. And that's honestly because your brain goes in a cycle. And it's amazing to me when you learn about the brain. I just read this book, uh, Switch On Your Brain. And years ago, I read the book, Who Switched Off My Brain, both by Carolina Leaf. And she talks about the power of your mind and your brain and the things we tell ourselves and the effect of it on our thinking, on our personalities, on our health. And... Your brain goes in these cycles where every day when you wake up, as you sleep, your dreams oftentimes will try to sort and discard thoughts and feelings that you experience during the day. But as you sleep, the things that you um, took on throughout the day settle into a deeper layer of your mind, a deeper layer of your thinking. And I believe this is part of why the Bible says don't go to bed angry is because if we go to bed with toxic thinking, then as you sleep, it actually settles deeper and gets more firmly established in your beliefs and in your heart. And so when you wake up the next morning, those things are no longer on the surface. They're a little bit deeper. And when they're a little deeper, it actually becomes easier for us to set up camp there and to think on those things. And every day you think on those things, it goes deeper and deeper into your thinking until it becomes a very secured Um, pathway or stronghold in your mind that can pose problems for you if it's toxic or can be beneficial to you if it's truth. And so getting in the word every day isn't about being religious, isn't about being formulated. It's literally about working with the way that God has made your body and helping your mind to stay healthy as well as building your spirit, man. Your spirit craves connection with the Father. Just like if you're a parent, your children crave connection with you. That, we've been made in His image. That is a reflection of our craving of our spirit to connect with our Father. Now, as I go into this, I want to talk to briefly those of you who are mothers, speaking of little children, with little children. Um, If you haven't listened to episode number nine, I talk about uh, something the Lord shared with me years back when I had little ones, and it was very hard to get a quiet time. So basically for like 10 years, I did not have a predictable, stable, quiet time. (laughs) And that was very That was a struggle for me at first um, until the Lord spoke to me what he did and it freed me from guilt and from feeling like a failure in my relationship with the Lord. And he showed me how to use that season to know him in different ways. And so go back and listen to episode nine when this is done and, and let that minister to your heart if you're in that season. But the bottom line being that connecting with the Lord's word doesn't have to be you sitting down over the Bible with your journal in isolation for two hours where you can focus and concentrate. Is that good? Is that important? Absolutely. And and I begin to really miss it if I go for too many days without that kind of solitude just to process my inner man. But if you're in a season where you literally cannot obtain solitude like that, there are ways to connect with the Lord. When you're doing dishes, put your ear earbuds in and listen to the Bible app um, and you can play the chapters, like get the Bible in that way. When I was a young mom, what I would do with my kids at breakfast or lunchtime, we would work on memorizing a scripture. And even though it was only one scripture, we'd repeat it multiple times. It was still the word of God. And it would still go into my heart and it still shaped the way I thought. It was still getting the word in me. And then I would think on it all day long. I would meditate on it, not even on purpose. It would just be in my thoughts. And I would, when I was thinking to myself, I'd think on it and I would dig out 
more depth from that passage and the Lord would speak to me about it. So there are different ways you can get the word of God in. Um, And I would encourage you, if you're a learner like I am and you love reading books, listening to audiobooks, listening to podcasts, that is all well and good. But let those be secondary to the word of God. Um, And again, Don't get religious and weird and make some hard, fast Nazi rule about this. But just in general, realize the word of God is pure. It has not been digested by anybody else except for the people who actually wrote the Bible. Um, And so it's, it's pure and you're not getting someone else's digested perspective of the word of God. And so it's going to be... um, the most pure concentrated way to get God's heart. However... Um, he made us for fellowship and he made us to be built by the body as well. So podcasts and books are also important. And so get those in as well. Um, but just, just be cautious. I've gone through seasons where I got so connected to books and podcasts that I actually wasn't really consuming the word of God directly. And, um, and so it's just important to connect with the word of God directly and with the Lord. It's interesting. I'll go through seasons where, different ways of connecting with the Lord will be my focus for a season. I'll go through seasons where the Lord will just have me hungering for the depth of the word and I'll do a lot of studying. Some seasons I'll just do a lot of like reading where it's like I'm just taking in stories and concepts, not a lot of digging, but a lot of consuming. Sometimes I'll go through seasons where the Lord has me doing a lot of waiting and listening and just waiting on him to come and speak to me. There have been some really, really sweet seasons where um, I'll do a lot of worship and just, and I will say worship, if you don't include worship in your quiet time, that's not a criticism, um, but you're missing out. Like (laughs) worship is And forgive the analogy, but worship is like making love. It's where you bring your guards down. You get very vulnerable, very bare, very intimate, and you can connect so much more deeply in that vulnerable, tender, totally exposed place. And I feel like worship uh, worship produces this um, surrender in my heart that nothing else does. Worship produces this humility in my heart that nothing else does. And it also produces a tenderness in my relationship with the Lord that nothing else does. And it's just it's just so vulnerable and it's so real. And honestly, when I first started trying to incorporate worship into my quiet time, it was very awkward. I was like, ah, I'm not used to this. And um, but I just started with a worship song that I loved. And turn on music if that helps you. Sometimes it distracts me because I get all distracted because I'm a musician. I get distracted with actual music (laughs) and I forget I'm worshiping. Um, So when I started, I just started by singing my favorite worship songs to the Lord. And I would close my eyes and I I would imagine he was sitting in front of me. And then I was just singing these things to him. And you guys, his presence shows up instantly. When I'm worshiping, it just, he shows up because... Like the word says that when you draw near to the Father, he will draw near to you. When you're worshiping, it is 100% honoring him, focused on him, blessing him. Think how much you love it when your children or your best friend or your husband or your wife, if you're a guy listening, um, comes to you and just starts praising you and just telling you how much they value you, how much they honor you, how much they appreciate you. Dude, it lights you up. It like fills and swells your heart, right? Well, God is totally the same way. And so if worship is something you haven't explored pulling into your quiet time, let me just encourage you to do that. Many of you have been so sweetly asking how you can help promote and support the podcast. And so I've thought about it and there are a couple ways that are super easy and super efficient. Firstly, sharing any posts that I make about an episode, rating and reviewing on social media and iTunes is huge. This is so simple and yet it really helps get the word out to more people and it actually helps me come up higher in iTunes search results so then people are able to find the podcast more easily. Secondly, you can financially support monthly through the Anchor app, which is where I'm hosted, 
or on Patreon. Just go to the Anchor app and hit support, or you can give through Patreon as a monthly member. Just visit patreon.com slash Java with Jen. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Java with Jen and sign up to be a monthly member at whichever amount that you prefer. Your donations help me to invest into new equipment, helps me send thank you gifts to interviewees, because I love to do that, and affords me the ability to continue to put my time back into my podcast so I can keep giving back to you. Now, some of you have already been doing this, and I am so grateful. Thank you so much, because when y'all do this, it encourages me so very much. So that again was share, rate, review on social media and iTunes, or give financially through Anchor or Patreon. Okay, with all that said, thanks for listening, and let's get back to the show. I want to share a couple stories with you guys of how I've connected with the Lord over the years in very unprecedented ways that just reminds me how much this is an actual relationship. So let me just say first that if you spend time, you come to the Lord, you try all the things, you desperately want to connect with Him, and it's like you're hitting a ceiling, I want you to know that happens sometimes. And there have been quiet times when I show up and I have brought my heart and I'm not getting through. Honestly, typically, like if you think about a friendship again, if you come and you show up, you're in a great mood, you're ready to connect, but you feel like there's just a barrier Usually that's because the other person is maybe hurt and they need to talk about it with you. Usually there's something that created a barrier, broke connection, broke trust, hurt feelings, whatever. And I have encountered at times when I feel like the Lord is not reaching back um, and I'll, ta- I'll step back and I'll be like, Father, have I hurt your heart somehow? Like show me if I hurt you somehow. And because again, this is a real relationship and relationships require work and maintenance. And now God is not hypersensitive, but at the same time, he's very sensitive. (laughs) And so the Holy Spirit is easily grieved by things like gossip, by things like dishonor, um, by disobedience, by rebellion, by uh, just there's things that grieve his heart. And, And something we forget sometimes is the way you treat your brothers and sisters in Christ has a direct impact on your relationship with the Father. So if you find yourself struggling to connect, sometimes there's unforgiveness in our heart. And the Bible says that if we don't forgive one another, the Father can't forgive us. And so if there's not forgiveness in our relationship, there's a barrier. So sometimes it's an unforgiveness issue. So I just want to throw that out there. If you're struggling to connect, ask the Lord. Don't go issue digging. But just realize the Holy Spirit's job is to lead you into truth, and He wants connection with you. He doesn't want barriers in the way. He is not content to hold a grudge. He wants those things dealt with. So take a minute and say, Father, if there's anything in my heart, if there's search me and know me and see if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Like if there's something that I have done that has offended you or hurt you, would you please show me? And the Holy Spirit's faithful to bring things to mind right away. And oftentimes it turns into such a deeply connecting time with him because then I can go into repentance and repentance is not heavy, hard, and long. Repentance just needs to be genuine. God, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean to to say that. I didn't mean to do that. I'm so sorry. Forgive me for being selfish. Forgive me for whatever. And he cleanses, he forgives, and he moves on. He's so good. Um, So I just wanted to tack that on there in case you've ever found yourself in that place. But let me give you a couple of stories of kind of more fun moments. Um, I remember when I was in college at, at Bible school, and I was determined to have a weekend with the Lord. And it was very common at the school that people would do that. They'd carve out a weekend, maybe fast, maybe go camping in the back 40. And, and they would just have a, a little retreat with the Lord. So I decided to do that one weekend. And uh, I had spent the whole weekend trying to connect with the Father. And y'all, it was dry as a bone. Like, nah thing. It was awful. And, um, and I, I still to this day don't know what I did wrong if I did anything wrong, but the Lord in his mercy showed up at the very end. And I remember I was out by the pond and it was like the very end of my weekend. And I I had gotten nothing, no revelation, no sweet moment in, in worship. The Lord hadn't spoken anything to me. Like it was so dry and I was so disappointed. 
And, uh, and I was like, God, I was so mad. It was like 10 minutes before curfew. And I was like, God, you said that if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us and you have not shown up. And so you have 10 minutes to redeem yourself because I have to go into the dorms now. And, uh, I was a little arrogant and, um, so nothing, you know, I'm out there at the pond, nothing, nothing. And so I'm climbing in bed that night. And at this point, I went from disappointed to angry to just hurt, you know, and I was like, God, I made time for you and you didn't show up. What is the deal? And so I went to bed and I said, Father, I'm really hurt. I feel like you didn't keep your word to me. And I said, but I'm going to go to bed. And if you would show up in a dream, I welcome you in a dream. I just wanted to connect with you this weekend. And that night I did have a dream. And in the dream, I dreamt that I saw my face. It was like super, super, super zoomed in where I could only see like across across the upper half of my face. And I was looking at myself, but my face was like this white porcelain. Like, uh, yeah, it was just this really pristine, perfect white porcelain. And as I looked at my face, um, this tear appeared in the corner of one of my eyes, but it was a drop of blood. And it, it trickled down my cheek. And that was, that was that whole scene. And I knew what the Lord was saying to me in that moment was the Lord was, the Lord was validating my seeking of him that weekend. And I, I just knew by instinct that the white porcelain of my face was the Lord showing me the purity of my intentions. Like he knew I was pure in my pursuit of him. And the, the blood that was a tear was kind of reminded me of the passage where Jesus dropped tears of blood because he had so much anguish in the garden. And I just felt like the Lord was saying that he saw my anguish and he saw my deep, deep effort to connect with him. And so in that one little snapshot of a dream, the Lord validated all my effort in that weekend and all my seeking of him. And then in the next scene, Um, the Lord showed me my angels and I had prayed in the past, you know, I'd been like, Lord, I've seen demons before, but I'm really not so interested in those guys. I'd really like to see my angels, you know, and I'd never seen my angels before. So in this dream, the Lord showed me my angels and I saw one and it was an eagle. It had the head of an eagle and I saw another and it had the head of a lion. And in the dream, I remember telling myself, (gasps) You have to remember this. God is showing you your angels. He's telling you about yourself. He's telling you something significant. He's heard your prayers. Like, pay attention. Remember this. And so when I woke up, I was like really arrested, like startled and excited and arrested. And I looked into it later and learns that the eagle uh, points to um, my place as a prophetic voice. And then the the lion points to my place as a voice of authority in the church. And, and so the Lord was just confirming the callings that he has placed on my life. And so just in that little dream, it became such a profound gift that he handed me. And so I say all of that to say, don't give up, pursue him. And when you pursue him and you walk away with nothing, realize or what feels like nothing, realize it's still not nothing because you have developed in that moment, in that time that you persisted, you have developed the persistence of a lover. You have developed and grown in your persistence of a pursuer of him. Even when you feel nothing, your faith has grown. And so if nothing else, you walked away with fortitude. You walked away with, I will seek him even in the night. I will seek him in the desert places. There's a passage in the Old Testament that I love where it talks about um, the lover and how the lover will follow him and that she'll follow him even through the desert. And that struck me because I was like, you know, it's easy to follow the father through the lavish places. It's not easy to follow him through the desert places, but a real lover will follow him even in the desert. And so even in those times when it's hard to connect, follow him in the desert. So here's a fun story though. Um, There was one time when I really wanted to connect with the Lord. And this is a very unreligious, out of the box quiet time. I don't have many quiet times like this. This may be one of the only ones I've had like this, but it's still just, it made me love how unreligious God is. And I was in college again. It was shortly after Bible school. And I was like, God, I just want to connect with you. But the idea of a traditional quiet time just sounds like drudgery right now. Like, can I connect with you in a unique way? And I felt at at that time I was loving Frank Sinatra. I was listening to Frank Sinatra all the time. And so I felt like the Lord was like, yeah, 
why don't you sit down, paint your nails, and listen to Frank Sinatra, and we'll talk. And I was like, okay. And it was kind of like the Lord was like taking the opportunity to do what he knew I liked to do. Uh, I love painting my nails and I love Frank Sinatra and I love talking to the people I care about. So the Lord was kind of like, hey, let's do what you want to do. And so I sat down on my floor and I began painting my toenails and I just turned on Frank Sinatra and I was just talking to the Lord. And you guys, he brought the lyrics of the song so alive. I was weeping while I was painting my toenails, listening to Frank Sinatra, connecting with the Lord because he began to speak to me through the words of the songs that I was listening to. And it was like, literally, I've never had that experience again, listening to Frank Sinatra, never. It was just a moment that the Lord touched and the Lord touched me in a way that he knew he wanted to do the things I cared about. And so that was just really special and just showed me how out of the box that he can totally be. And then this last story is one of my favorites. I love to tell people. So I was again in college. I had lots of time with Jesus in college because I had the time. Uh, And and I I love to carve out time with him even now. But just those memories I created with him in those earlier years are some of my favorite. Um, And so I told the Lord, I was like, Lord, it's a Friday night. And I had friends inviting me to go out. But I really wanted to go on a date with the Lord. And so I was like, Lord, I want to go on a date with you. Let's go, let's go hang out at the coffee shop. And so I got my stuff and I went to the coffee shop and I was trying to have a quiet time, but with people everywhere, I'm such an extrovert. It it was difficult. (laughs) It's kind of hard to have this deep spiritual encounter uh, when you're distracted. So I was sitting there trying to read the Bible, trying to journal, and I was just really more interested in watching people. And so I just kind of was watching people after a while, just sitting there and like, feeling a little bit like I was failing at my connecting with the Lord on a date at a coffee shop. But, uh, this little boy comes in and he's, um, he's selling chocolates. And so I tell the Lord, I was like, Oh Lord, man, I wish I had a boyfriend who'd buy me chocolates. That's so romantic and sweet. And I just felt like the Lord responded right away. Like he jumped up and was like, I want to buy you chocolates. And I was like, okay, I'm losing my mind. That's ridiculous. Like, this is silly. I'm totally living in a fantasy world now. And I just felt like the Lord was like, no, no, I really want to buy you chocolates. And I was like, Lord, even if you want to buy me chocolates, I'm paying for it with my own money. So that's like, I have mental problems. Like, this is not real. And the Lord was like, no, really, I want to buy you chocolates. Buy some of those chocolates. They're for me. And he was like, I'll give you your money back. Like, I want to pay for them. And I was like, oh, this is ridiculous. Okay, fine. So I called the boy over and I was like, sure, I'd like some chocolates. And he was like, okay, he's a little Hispanic boy. And so, you know, as he's like fiddling around getting my change, I look at him and I ask, hey, so what's your name? And he looks up at me and he goes, Jesus. Y'all, his name was Jesus. (laughs) Jesus is Jesus in Spanish. (laughs) Oh my gosh, I died. I literally died right there on the spot. I had to contain myself from busting out laughing, but in my heart, I was like, Lord, only you, only you. So anyways, that's one of my favorite things. Um, Just moments like that where your quiet time doesn't have to be this formulated religious exercise that's like torture. Like it should not be that. I don't think I would have very good relationships with my friends if I treated them like formulated routines that were like torture, it would not It would not work. So break the religious boxes, get out of the boxes, do the things. The goal of your quiet time is to connect with the person who loves you the most in all of eternity. The one who believes the best about you, the one who has such profound plans for you, the one who knows you better than anyone else and yet still wants to hear you talk about your day, that is the one you're connecting with in your quiet time. So break all those boxes. The word of God is powerful to change our mind, change our thinking, build your spirit. Worship is powerful to build humility in your heart and draw your heart in such an unguarded, intimate, connected way with the Lord. Prayer is powerful because you're partnering with God in the things he cares about and you're creating a doorway on earth for him to move. Like these things are powerful things that build your relationship with the Lord. But listen, God is not so spiritual that he can't get down on his hands and knees and get in your world. So I hope this helped you. I hope 
and and honestly, I'm staying away from giving you a formula. I love to get practical in my in my uh, podcast episodes because I feel like that's so helpful. But in this kind of a thing, I'm I'm staying away from giving you any formulas because a formula will not necessarily be your magic button to a connected relationship with the Lord. I think breaking religious boxes and getting inside a more simple approach of realizing he's a real person, a real God that wants to connect with you and love on you. I think that is the best way to begin that journey into his heart. Ask him, ask him what to do. If he puts on your heart to fast, I'm in the middle of my New Year's fast right now, except it's not New Year's. <laughs> I'm actually doing the recording this between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And the Lord asked me to do my New Year's fast between the holidays. So that's what I'm doing. And it's been really profound. And, and that's what the Lord had for me. It's a, it's a gift and it's a blessing and I'm pursuing him and seeking him and he's working in my heart. It's been so good. So ask the Lord, ask the Lord how he wants to connect with you. Listen, you have a way with the Father that only you will have with him. Only you. Your relationship with God will never, ever, ever look like someone else's. Your relationship with God is unique because you're the only you and the way the two of you connect is going to be unique to who you and he are together. So take that, run with that. I hope this makes you feel empowered and encouraged to have fruitful, quiet times that are refreshing and energizing and and helpful. And of course, you guys know my heart. I, t- I love to break religious boxes, but that doesn't mean that we get away from the, the stability and the significance of spiritual disciplines. Listen, in your pursuing of him, don't get so far off in the one side of abstract that you walk away from the foundational elements of the word of God and going to church and tithing and being in fellowship with believers and praying and worshiping and repenting. Like those should be necessary elements that show up in your time with the Father because that's where they originated is from the Father and, and there are they're ways that he's given us to connect with him. So make sure you walk in a balanced place about this. But again, at the bottom of all of it, the foundation is God is not a religion. God is a person. He loves you. He loves to connect with you. He believes in you. He has powerful plans for you. You're his favorite person. Now, don't go anywhere yet because I have Life Hacks with Jen coming at you right now. Okay, y'all. So for today's Life Hack... Now, I kind of pointed to one earlier when I was talking about worship mob, but I'm going to throw in a second one there where I'm going to tell you about this diet drink. We're coming up on the New Year's, which by the time you guys hear this, we may be well past New Year's, but a diet drink, all of us want to be a little healthier, and this is both delicious and super low in calories. If it's going to be summertime when you hear this, hey, it's very refreshing for the summer too. So it is basically as simple as this. You throw in an orange into your blender a small orange, a medium-sized orange, whatever, throw in a bunch of ice cubes, like maybe 20 ice cubes, and then throw in just a few thick blubby splashes, maybe about a quarter of a cup of, say, almond milk. I like to do unsweetened almond milk, Um, maybe some fat-free half and half because it creams it up a bit, and then vanilla, and then some sweetener of your favorite choice. Maybe that's stevia, maybe that's monk fruit, whatever it is. Blend it up and you, my dear, have a beautiful, delicious Orange Julius smoothie. And it's literally, depending on what you use in there, mine are like 50 calories. They're super, super low in calories. They're great when you need, um, maybe you're craving something sweet, you need something refreshing. It's the middle of the afternoon, but you don't want to ruin your appetite for dinner. Or say it's right before bed, but you don't want to eat anything heavy or really rich. This is really just a perfect refreshing drink and it's low in calories so it's easy on the waistline girls and lots of vitamin c so that is the life hack for today super simple go back and do it again it's got your five ingredients it's got an orange it's got almond milk or whatever light milk you choose to use vanilla flavoring vanilla uh, extract throw in your ice 
and throw in your sweetener and you have a delicious Orange Julius smoothie. So go enjoy you a smoothie. And while you're at it, head on over to Worship Mob. Uh, Just Google them. I'm not sure if they have a direct website. I do believe that I do know they're on YouTube, so you can look them up on YouTube and create a playlist. But they also at one point had free downloadable MP3 files by Worship Mob that you could just download to your device and listen to whenever you want. So um, maybe do a Google search of Worship Mob free downloads and see what you can find and enjoy them. Now, if you listen to Worship Mob and you're enjoying it, or if you make the smoothie and you're enjoying it, or if you listen to this episode and you're enjoying it, do a screenshot of your phone, throw it in your stories on Instagram and tag me and I will throw you up on my stories as well. But thanks so much um, for being a part, for listening in today and for participating. And again, I hope you were encouraged by today's message. And here are some ways that you can connect with me uh, outside of these episodes. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's show. For those of you who've rated or shared this podcast on social media, thank you. It really means a lot to me. And don't forget, you can always email me with questions or comments at javawithjenpodcast at gmail.com. And for links or show notes, just go visit my blog at jennaleesamuel.wordpress.com. Until next time, you've got this and God's got you.